In today's um, video, I am going to give you a high level overview of robotics history as well as robot control. We will spend several weeks talking about robot control. And the reason it's a high level overview of robotics history is because there are some wonderful videos about robotics history on YouTube. And I have provided several hyperlinks to those on the Moodle course site. The objectives for today's lecture are to survey key figures in robotics history, Describe the first autonomous robot. Describe the first artificial intelligence inspired robot. Describe a Breitenberg vehicle and describe the behaviors of one of the first robots. W. Gray Walter's tortoises were the first autonomous robots. He created these robots around the 1950s. He was a neurophysiologist who was interested in how the brain worked. He studied brain function by building and analyzing machines with animal-like behavior. So he created a biomimetic machine with properties similar to those of biological systems, and he called these machines the tortoises. Each tortoise had three wheels in a tricycle design with a front wheel for steering and a back wheel for driving. He named his tortoises Elmer and Elsie, and they were electromechanical robots that were light sensitive. Elmer and Elsie meant a machine that can think and a machine that can learn based upon the Latin. The components of the robots were one photocell to sense light levels, one bump sensor, one rechargeable battery, three motors for three wheels, and one analog electronic circuit which connected the bump sensor and the photocells to the wheels. The tortoises had the following behaviors. They could find the light, head toward the light, back away from bright light, turn and push to avoid obstacles, and move to recharge their battery when it was low. This would be considered reactive control in today's control paradigm. Because the control of the robot used a collection of prior, prioritized reflexes, the system of reflexes resulted in an animal-like behavior. The combination of these behaviors could create an emergent behavior and unexpected behavior that the robot created that was not explicitly defined in the system. Breitenberg Vehicles Valentino Breitenberg wrote a book, Vehicles, in 1984. The book was on how to design simple robots that produce behaviors that appear animal-like and lifelike. It was a precursor to reactive and behavior-based control similar to W. Gray Walter's tortoises. These robots had sensors directly connected to their motors that produced photophilic, photophobic, excitatory, and inhibitory connections. Breitenberg described how these mechanisms can be used to store information, build a memory, and achieve robot learning. The behaviors observed based upon the connections of the sensors and the motors were love, explore, aggressive, and fear. We are going to do a vehicle to lab in a couple of weeks in this course. So here I want to show you a video of a Breitenberg vehicle that was created for this course several years ago.
Shaky was the first AI-inspired robot. Shaky was built at the Stanford Research Institute in 1970. It was the first mobile robot to use artificial intelligence techniques. It was named Shapy, Shaky because it shook when it executed plans to move in the world. It was controlled by a very large computer. It used spatial data from the camera and laser range measurements to recognize objects. And then it would create a path to that object. It would push objects over that it found along the way. The Stanford cart was developed in 1977 by Hans Moravec, and it used vision-based navigation. This robot was a cart on bicycle wheels. It also moved very slowly because of the difficulty of processing data from vision and computer processors. It would later move to Carnegie Mellon and become the CMU rover when Hans Moravec moved there in 1983 and it used a camera and ultrasound sensing for navigation. So far, all of these robots have either had reactive control before it was called that, or deliberative or hierarchical control. In 1986, Rodney Brooks at MIT created the subsumption architecture, would come, which would come to be known as reactive control, which is a parallel arbitration between layers of task achieving behaviors. We will do a lab where you will design a control system using subsumption architecture. The architecture tightly coupled sensing and acting to create a robot that responded quickly to changes in the environment. Brooks' work later became known as behavior-based control or behavior-based architecture. Recall that reactive is a precursor to behavior-based control. Then later, Ron Arkin and Michael Arbib created the potential fields and motor schema-based navigation for a mobile robot that used behaviors but only for navigation. 